How do y'all? LFG here, back in the Fish Cave studio, and today we're going on a river adventure for a catfish and gar. Before we get to firing up that fan boat and get to going down the river, let me tell you about today's awesome sponsor of this video, and that is WorkSharp. As y'all may know, I never step into the outdoors without a very sharp knife. I've collected knives since I was a young buck, but now that I'm an outdoorsman and do this a lot, I like to make sure my fishing and hunting knives are super sharp. And the best way to do that is to keep them sharp after every time you go out and use them. I've gone through whetstones, honing steel, strops, all those things can be used in a combination, but they take time to learn. So when I found out about WorkSharp and they sent me one of their products, I found out that you can cut that time down tremendously. WorkSharp has come up with a number of knife and tool sharpening devices that enable you to get your knife sharp quick and get back in the outdoors. When I say quick guys, I'm talking about within minutes you're going to have a super sharp knife. Just go to their website, look at how they design these belt sharpening systems that are going to have a perfect convex edge for you to sharpen just about all your outdoor knives. I even thought of a pocket size sharpening workbench to make sure that you stay sharp all the time in the outdoors, whether you're on a hunt or on a fishing trip. Keep this thing in the boat for sharpening hooks, broadheads, attaching broadheads. And they even thought of an ingenious 20 degree edge so just lay your blade flat on there and just keep it honed. You always want to make sure you're keeping your blades honed after every time you use them. So you can be like me and go through hours and hours of trying to learn the correct angle and taking off a lot of metal on your blades using sharpening stones and then honing steel or get the WorkSharp system, get it done within minutes and get back in the outdoors. If you guys want to learn more about WorkSharp, make sure to go down in the description and click the link in there so you can learn how to sharpen your knives using this system. I promise you, if you're an outdoorsman, this will save you a lot of time and keep you sharp for anything you're doing. So if you guys want to learn more about how I sharpen all my knives, let me know down in the comments and I'll do a whole video on it. Now it's time to put our knives and our fishing rods to use down in the Brazos Valley on a river that I used to live not too far from. So it brought back some memories and there are some huge fish in this river. And it's one of the coolest rides in an airboat I've ever gone on. Check it out. y'all man i haven't been on an airboat many times we got some frozen little carps drum and carp drum and carp freshly harvested i think brad caught these y'all kept up with the videos in the summer you know jug lining got into that a lot of fun really cool i think we're gonna do some of that right here and then maybe get a pole line out as well there's some big gar that lives in, live in these rivers in Texas. You've probably seen it on River Monsters and other YouTube videos. So these are jugs by Brad. <laughs> Anything special about these? You got the T pattern on the end where you can just kind of wrap it up. 
supposed to go a little smoother than that. Mine are all experimental, everyone's different. It's like a half ounce or a one ounce weight, a little circle hook or an octopus hook, Wait. foam noodle. Mike's cutting up a little bit of drum. Good. Is he going up current? Oh, this one's getting a bite too, Brad. Dang it. I had him for a second. That was a big one right here. I'm telling you right now, that was a big one. Woo! Oh, that's the juice. Multiple lines out. We've had a couple of takers, but no hangers. We need we need ones that are hungry. We just put out a big old honker piece on my rod because I got a bunch of line so we could let them run. But they've bit the other lines pretty good. So Mike just saw an eight footer. That's a big. That's that's a world that record, me. dude. What? What do you want me to say? Oh, what did you call it? Middle one's on Abu Garcia. 20 feet of line. They just know. They know which one to get. Just keep it. It's going. To set it. Oh yeah, it's going. Hard. Oh dang, you got him. Is he on, Brad? I think he's on. Is he? I think it might be a little one. I don't think so. Still there. Dude, I think he's, he's on, on, bro. Fish on, man. Fish on. <laughs> it ain't nothing big if he's coming in easy like that. Nothing. Oh dang. Uh, Can't yours get big? <laughs> They know that that one's got 44 pounds of drag. And that Abu Garcia's got about 10. Oh, it's like they're coming in waves. Let them eat, let them eat, let them eat, let them eat. Talk to me, Mike. Give me some, give me some tips. Well, it's about the fifth hookup we've had. Not hookup, fifth bite we've had. We're not very prepared. Justin's the only one that brought enough line to actually probably land one, so. We're just out here getting bites. Getting bit up. That thing's taking line like crazy now. Oh yeah, that one's committed. In it to win it. Oh, she's running still. Oh, yeah, still going up river. So I say when it stops would be a good know, time. Or you, you might run out of line again. You gonna do it? A lot of stretch in that line. <gasps> Come off. The guard game. It's tricky, y'all. It's tricky. I've done it a few times. And it seems like you hook up on one out of every five or six if you got everything set up. I really want this rod to go off right here because so I've got a ton of 100 pound line on here, braid. So I know I can get a good hook set and I can let them run a ways. So I got a 14,000 size reel. Just let them swallow it, get real happy with that bait, and then just. I'm getting bit. Got him. Stay on. Stay on. Oh, here we go now. What are you feeling? I don't know. We're about to know real quick what it is. Oh, yeah. Softy. You ready for dinner? Softy, yes, dude. Soft shell, catch and cook. That's what I'm talking about. Soft shell turtle, man. 
How soft are they? Will they bite pretty good? Oh, yeah. Look at that. It almost looks like a stingray underneath. All right, we're gonna let this guy go. It's his lucky day. See Mr. Softy so quick. If we had ice on the strip, we would definitely keep that. I've always wanted to try one of those. I've heard they're pretty tasty. Oh, God. Oh, he oh. still got it. Y'all wanna reel up? Oh my. Or y'all wanna give him some time? Yeah, let's, let's give let him, him time. chew. Dude, with that, with the way he just took that. Yeah, down. that's a big dog. <laughs> it's a big one, dude. He's hooked. Uh -oh. He might be caught on that one. Uh -oh. it? Yeah. We're gonna check these jugs. See if anything's all there. I think there's a big catfish on one of them. Nice blue cat. Wait. Woo! Is that the biggest one you've caught? Uh, off jugs? Yeah, I, I've had one bigger than that on rock reel, but that is the biggest one I've seen on a jug so far. That is awesome. Mr. Whiskers, you're going to the grease, man. Going to the grease. <laughs> yes, we didn't get skunked, boys. <laughs> no Still thought it was going to happen. The last Pretty one. Bad. Here we go. Winner, winner. Catfish dinner. That'll work. There's a rod. Just the rod case. This used to be uh, my rod sleeve until the motor, uh, the blades. Little note, little uh, airboat safety. Um, don't do that. Don't do this right here. <laughs> this is bad. Made it in safely, thank goodness. It scared the crap out of us when my rod sleeve vibrated up from the bottom and just <clears throat> got caught in the motor and we didn't get skunked this is a big old catfish so we're gonna go clean this up and that's gonna be either some place tonight or later gar fishing man I just don't have it down you got to let them take it then they drop it and it's it's a process so I definitely need to work on my gar fishing skills but this is the way to do it taking the arrow out we didn't see anybody out there they were rolling you know, the water was coming in. It was a really cool experience on the water today. And it's always good when you can bring home the meat, especially some tasty blue cat. Woo Mike, I want to see how you clean cats. On the smaller fish, I don't skin them, but on these big ones, you just want to make an outline. Wow, this knife is sharp. Yeah, it's very sharp. You just go with the outline. You want the outline. Yep, go ahead and get the skin off. Yep, okay. Yep, skin and pliers. That'll do though. There we go. And right here, the dome. Go around it. And there we go. Yeah, oh, that's a juicy looking steak. Mm. Uh, uh, there we go. And the belly meat, this one's so big. 
probably even get cheek meat out of them. Just make sure you peel that off or you can rub it off with a uh, like a scrub brush in the sink. That's the only bad part. Woo! -wee. Good day on the river. I can't believe how far that catfish actually took that jug line down river. Just riding in that airboat today was awesome, going through the Brazos Valley. That's an area that is huge historic landmark in Texas. Saw bald eagles, all sorts of birds. We saw big alligator gar rolling, tons of turtles. It was just a really cool ride. Big thanks to my buddy Mike for firing up the airboat and doing a great job steering that thing around, going around those trees and rocks and everything. It was a little sketchy at times. I'm sure we're gonna be going down there again to try to get on some of those big gar. They are huge. I'd love to get a cool gar replica on this wall, man. Gotta fill this thing up with some mounts. Hit the thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you're digging the river fishing. I don't do enough of it, I feel like. I do tons of lake fishing going out in bass boat, but river fishing is awesome, man. Go ahead and subscribe right here for more outdoor action and hit the ding dongs so you don't miss a single bite, y'all. And I appreciate you being here. I'll see you on the next one.